Hey, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, let's talk a little bit about Nick Walker at eight weeks out from the 2024 New York Pro. Now, we got two updates from Nick today. Well, two separate posts. There's two updates in this first post. Um, and I want to clarify here. I saw a lot of people talking about kind of the marks on Nick's body. You can see kind of a yellowish bruise on Nick's chest there. Apparently, Nick had had cupping that same day. And that was the reason for these bruises um, because of the, uh, the the massage and the cupping itself. So I don't think Nick has a pec tear here based on the comments of, from people that seem to know Nick. Um, I, so I wouldn't worry about that. So eight weeks out, 279 pounds. We got a most muscular and then we got also a rear lat spread. And Nick looks incredible. And there's a lot of people in the comments saying he would have won the Arnold Classic UK which I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, he's still eight weeks out. Um, and at the Arnold Classic UK, he would have been nine weeks out. So I think that's a little premature um, to say this physique would have won. But he does look really good. But again, keep in mind and kind of measure your expectations here. He's eight weeks out. I don't think he's ready to step on stage here. I think that's a little bit extreme. But I would also say, we, I know we've been comparing Nick to Tonio Burton a lot because Tonio is the defending New York Pro Champion. And Nick is the former New York Pro Champion, so we're going to get to see two past New York Pro Champions go head-to-head. -head. So I think that's why we've talked so much about Nick and Tonio. But I don't think it's that fair of a comparison because Tonio is doing the Arnold Classic South America, so he's a little bit closer to competing than Nick because the Arnold Classic South America is the first week of April. It's April 5th in the New York Pro. Isn't until May 18th, so they're almost a month apart. So I think that Tonio, obviously, he looks really conditioned and he looks really close to competing because apparently he is. He's doing the Arnold Classic South America. So Nick is a little bit further out than Tonio's. I don't think it's quite an apples to apples comparison here. But we also got another update from Nick later in the day with some clips of him training. And I know in the thumbnail of this video, of his video on his page, you can see him hitting most muscular, but that's there's no posing in the video that I see. So that was kind of weird watching that. I don't know how he selected that most muscular as his thumbnail, but he's not hitting a most muscular in the video. But Nick looks huge, and I think the point here is that I really think Nick is going to make a hell of a comeback this year. Looking at the comment sections for both Arnold Classic weekends, the UK and the Ohio, I think the fans really miss seeing him com compete, and they like to speculate as to how he would have done in these lineups. And I think that Nick... Being such a fan favorite, I mean, there were so many people talking about just the fact that even when he was just presenting an award on stage and he was wearing like an oversized polo, everybody was talking about how freaky he looked next to the bodybuilders that he was presenting the awards to and the fact that he was fully clothed in that update, in that video, which by the way, I completely agree. He's, he's a freak and he looks like a freak in that video. He looks gigantic. And I myself am a Nick Walker fan. He's one of the guys that I really enjoy watching. He's one of the guys that I enjoy listening to. I think he, I like the fact that he's so confident because it makes him more interesting. I feel like it makes him more dynamic. And frankly, I'm excited to see him back on the Olympia stage. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, next up in the news, we finally got a recap from Tyler Mannion, the vice president of the NPC slash IFBB. They've been doing these lately for every major show. Um, so he did a recap for men's open bodybuilding, specifically between Hadi and Samson for the Arnold Classic UK, and he kind of confirmed a lot of things that we all thought. So this was about a 15-minute recap just discussing Hadi and Samson, and I'm going to hit on some of the key points here, and I'm probably going to play a couple key points from it um, and sum it up for you guys a little bit quicker. So Hadi versus Samson, a couple key things that Tyler says here. It's important to point out that for the Arnold Classic Ohio, it was so decisively a victory for Hadi Chupin that when Tyler did this recap for Ohio, he didn't even do a pose-by-pose -pose breakdown because he said he felt like it wasn't even necessary because it wasn't that close. I'd say Saturday Night Samson is definitely by far the best version of Samson that we've seen yet. And Hadi, from Friday to Saturday, really filled out and brought a package that was very similar to the Arnold and Columbus. Next up is the ab and thigh pose. This pose is just, you know, a crazy, crazy pose for Hottie. It, you know, basically probably no one beats him in the ab and thigh pose in the whole entire professional league right now. 
So the best that guys can do is just keep improving their admin thighs pose next to them to make sure it's not, not a blowout pose for them. Overall, pose by pose, it was 6-2 to two hottie. Even though the score is 6-2, to two, this competition between these two was much, much closer than Columbus was. And I think you can see that, again, in the front double, I would have no argument which way you get which person you gave that pose to. So the reason why this video is so much longer is because Tyler says in this video that he felt this was a much, much closer competition between Hottie and Sampson than Ohio. And so he does he does a full pose by pose breakdown. So one of the interesting things that Tyler said in this video was by the end of all the poses, he says he would give two to Samson and six to Hottie. He said he would give the uh, side chest and the front lat spread to Samson. And he said he, he had the he had the front double bicep as a toss up between the two, specifically at the Saturday night finals. He said that was a very close pose for them. But overall, he said two poses to Samson, which were the side chest and the front lat spread and the other six poses going to Hottie. And he also said that he feels that the Saturday night version of Samson at the Arnold Classic UK was the best Samson, in his opinion, that we've ever seen. So I think that kind of confirms what a lot of us thought. I think a lot of you guys thought that. I thought that. Um, and it, even the head judge, Tyler Mannion, thought that. Now, Tyler also made a point to say that even though he had it six poses to two, that might sound like a pretty commanding victory for Hottie. He really emphasized and he really stressed that this was a very close competition between the two and he felt that it was completely different than the Arnold Classic Ohio. And even so, I still want to commend Hottie for this because we've commended Samson a lot because I think it's pretty impressive that Samson was, whatever was going on with his health, um, the stuff going on in his personal life, leaving his coach. But with Hottie, I was watching Hottie Rambod's podcast earlier today and Hottie was talking about the process and the stress of trying to get to the UK, trying to get that visa, and how last minute everything was, and how they were living out of a suitcase, basically, in Houston, waiting for everything with that visa to come through, like the week of the show. And I think he even said at one point in the podcast, they weren't even sure if they were going to be able to go to the show, like up until one day before. So even though I don't feel Hottie was as sharp as he was in Ohio, and I think Tyler kind of confirms that here with his commentary, I mean, part of it was that Samson was that much better, but I think part of it was the stress that affected Hottie's physique. You got to still point out how impressive it is that Hottie was still able to pull out a pretty decisive victory here, still look really damn good in terms of conditioning. And even though he didn't walk away with a unanimous victory like he did in Ohio, Four of the five judges still having him in first at both pre-judging and finals, considering the travel stress that he went through like literally the day before the show, is frankly really impressive. So those were the main takeaways from Tyler's video. He emphasized that he felt it was close. He thought this was the best version of Samson we've ever seen at the Saturday night show specifically. He had it two poses Samson, six poses Hottie, with the front double maybe being a toss-up on Saturday night. He felt that both guys improved a lot Saturday night. But overall, again, I think we owe Tyler Mannion a thank you because we are a little bit spoiled to, to live in kind of this modern era of bodybuilding where we can hear directly from the judges why a decision was made. And I think that's very valuable to the fans, but even more valuable to the competitors to, to have this type of feedback from the people that are making the decisions that directly impact their career. And again, the other takeaway too is the reason why this video was so long was because they didn't do this for Ohio. They did a recap, but they felt like it wasn't even close enough to even need to do a pose by pose. So that shows how much closer they thought this was than Ohio as they spent all this extra time breaking down each and every pose. And honestly, I think the future of bodybuilding looks bright. You've got this young guy, Tyler Mannion, heading the organization now, and he's got these new kind of relevant ideas that we can relate to, kind of the younger audience. I'm 30. I think Tyler's about that age, maybe a little bit younger. So you've got him being the new leadership for the IFBB NPC. Um, you've got the Arnold Classic kind of raising the stakes with the prize money. You've got the new team running the Arnold Classic. I think you're probably going to see a direct response from the Olympia, probably some major changes there for this year, 2024. You've got a ton of young, new, rising talent 
in professional bodybuilding, guys that haven't even made their pro debuts yet. And you're seeing guys that have been around for a couple of years making massive progress. I think this is a really exciting time to be a bodybuilding fan. I think the future is bright. Now, one of those fast rising stars, those up and comers per se, competing in the Arnold Classic South America is Good Vito, who we just got a brand new physique update from today. As we get closer to the show, as we're at the three week out mark, um, a lot of people anticipating Good Vito's pro debut here at the Arnold Classic South America. Now, this is another front double bicep shot, and that tends to be his best pose, tends to be his favorite pose to post. And of course, he does have this big, and I think Landerlin is one of his supplement sponsors, or one of his sponsors, and he has this big Landerlin logo, of course, covering his midsection, what I think is going to be the biggest point of potentially interest here, because that's where he had his uh, his hernia surgery towards the end of 2023. That's going to be a spot that a lot of people are looking at when he's on stage. I thought that was an interesting choice to cover that here. But frankly, I don't have much else to say about it. I mean, it's his front double bicep pose, one of his best poses at about three weeks out. He looks monstrous in the pose. It's a really good pose for him. I I don't know why he chose to cover his midsection there specifically. I mean, it seems like a very intentional choice with the placement of that logo. But I think he's really going to spice up that lineup. And again, we should have the official competitor list in about a week or so for the Arnold South America. Because honestly, right now, we're more like two weeks out. We're under three weeks out. And right now, we know of Tony Burton, Rafael Brandau, Good Vito, Carlos Thomas Jr. Now, I want to talk about the classic physique division at the Arnold Classic South America next. Now, we know I know Urs Kalsinski said he wanted to do all three Arnolds, so I believe Urs will be there. I don't believe Ramon will be competing. Uh, I don't know about Breon. And I don't know about Wesley. We don't necessarily have confirmation from them, but I think Urs is the only one that has publicly said he's planning on doing it. But I want to talk about this guy that's going to be making his pro debut at the Arnold Classic South America. I've been trying to keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on with the Brazilian bodybuilding scene because we've had, honestly, a lot of talent come out of Brazil in the last three or four years or so and really just rise straight to the top whether it's Ramon Dino, whether it's uh, Horse MD, whether it's Raphael Brandau, or if you look at the sheer just dominance across the women's divisions from Brazilian athletes, especially in wellness, it's pretty insane. But this guy's making his pro debut at the Arnold Classic South America in the Classic Physique Division. He's got pretty insane proportions. His Instagram handle is at Livinho Pro. And a lot of the Brazilian bodybuilding pages are talking about this guy being excited for his pro debut. Obviously, an insanely small waist, a very insane V taper, pretty pretty good size legs for a guy that has a waist that tiny. Obviously, really wide flaring lats in these poses, um, but it's really impressive how small his waist is. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he comes from bodybuilding. I believe he actually earned his pro card in bodybuilding, but he's transitioned to classic and will be debuting as a classic physique pro at the Arnold Classic South America. So from what I understand, this physique that he has for Classic Physique is is much different than what he brought for bodybuilding. And kind of this downsized version of his physique seems to be a lot more aesthetic than some of the pictures I've seen of him as a bodybuilder. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Click the bell notification icon. All that stuff helps out tremendously. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.